So if I look at, if I look at, um, I go back through oh, this. Oh, no, sorry. Wait, wait to start okay. pushing, just close the door. Okay. Yeah, me having a conversation about it, I assume you definitely liked it more than I did. Uh, how do you know? Because <laughs> I really, really didn't like it. Oh, okay. Then yes, perhaps. Okay. Well, there's the outside drum. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lois Anderson was with Olga Corker now? I didn't realize that. She's the one that had that old, um, la cloche antique, that yeah, old mm -hmm. antique bell with the, yeah. kind of the cookie, the fortune cookie pieces, mm -hmm. like a yeah. paper that float up. Um, anyways, which I thought that that piece itself I thought was quite lovely, and it would it would again it was triggered by you'd walk in the room and there was a series of fans, and if you got too close to the bell, woof, the it would the the air would start, and you you couldn't the the you know the fortune cookie papers would fly around and then you'd have to kind of back up and they would settle and then you would try to kind of glimpse some of the writing of it like but it was hard to because they would the papers would kind of be folded this way and if you moved in closer it would all start you know it all kind of blow again um, there was uh, I mean that particular piece whether it was really mise en valeur and, and placed in its greatest value where you can appreciate that work. I don't think it, it, it worked in the, in the little room mm -hmm. it was in. Uh, it, but that particular piece I, I, I thought was, you know, if you're looking for beauty, that's the other yeah. thing. Like, it, you know, the kind of aesthetic quality to things. I thought that some of the art pieces were really interesting. Like, but few I thought had that element of beauty. And I don't mean that it has to be aesthetically pleasing, but just that there's something about the quality of work that really, um, in the craftsmanship and in the way that was made and thought mm -hmm. through, I thought that that bell piece had that component yes. to it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought that the rolling of the dice on the ground and how it reflected off again, especially against that, it was like a vaulted ceiling. Mm -hmm. I thought that the quality of that was there for, for me, for that. Um, I thought some of Nadia Mir's work and how even how she had placed the little canvases along the wall at the bottom and then she had a wall of stuff that done previously with those bead yeah. images. Except I didn't understand what the bead images were doing in there, personally. Maybe if she, I, I, I didn't see the connection to the SCAR project. Not saying that, that they weren't of value, but I didn't understand whether they were part of the SCAR project or whether they were something different. Did you understand? To, to me, it was sort of, I was just viewing, given that, uh, which I know the stuff of Nadja's that I know the best is mostly her bead work. Yes. And it is a sort of thing we're not having discussed with anybody or talked to anybody about the SCAR project or was interactivity and so on. And I just figured that the large bead images were given that they were, we're talking about uh, black on white, white on black and so on, that the whites were indicative or uh, we're talking about uh, some sort of type of scarring within the bead work. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And I just thought that they were, you, know, that you talked so about you aesthetic quality, I thought they were just gorgeous. They're beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah, they were also, those, those pieces were beautiful. Mm -hmm. I thought that, um, what other image struck, I kind of liked, um, as far as the aesthetic, Kara Lee Fuglitz, mm -hmm. yeah. her transparent plastic, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. ethereal, mm -hmm. almost invisible objects. Yes. I thought there was something really beautiful. There, beauty maybe is not the wrong word, but there was something in, enrapturing about that space and that again you would walk up and then you would kind of walk around this trap you would almost have to be careful about where you're walking because you're afraid to walk into things into this object and then the fan would go off and it would just move it enough that you had a sense of the of a presence mm -hmm. so there was something about uh i thought it was a she worked with that space really in an interesting with the body and the space mm -hmm. And these things, that little plastic kind of floaty things, you know, um, that almost was like a window, but it wasn't. And it was, it was almost there was a presence, but an absence. There was something there, especially later, as I reflected back. There's something there that I thought was interesting. Okay, now there, it's a sort of thing to me. It was fine. It was there, and it was there. That was it, it. Did, it didn't do anything to me. It, it, the fan didn't go on and off. The fan was constantly on, and it was to me looked like it was an after the, after the fact thought, or an after the fact addition that they put the fan on so that people could realize, oh yes, this is art, as opposed to just walking by and not seeing anything. Mm. Yeah. So maybe anyway, I I, I had a different experience mm -hmm. with that. No, so you had a definitely. <laughs> you were much more 
understanding, much more open, much more kind, and yeah, you definitely had a completely different experience than I did. I just thought that even though specific artists, a very few specific artists were stood out, and I mentioned a couple, mm -hmm. but I just thought that uh, I was open to the experience, and I, you know, I thought that there was something to experience there. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, like some of the rooms, like I thought that the Ian Wallace, David Armstrong six room mm -hmm. at the top, I, for me that, I didn't understand the relationship there. And and that was a room I was a bit disappointed with because it was full of art. Ian, Ian Wallace's works were all around the room. And then David Armstrong six's sort of kind of sculptural stuff was in the middle of the room. And it was actually sort of hard to circulate in that space because of all the art in there. Yeah, I did, yeah some, some other wonky and stupid sculptures. <laughs> I just, for me, it was more that neither neither artist I felt. Is, I mean, I, I think I had more of a connection with Ian mm -hmm. Wallace's work. Yeah, the bad bits. Uh, I thought it was for me stronger mm -hmm. and more interesting. Um, but the two of them, I didn't, I didn't, I had trouble seeing that okay. relationship. Whereas, even in the room next to it, yeah. um, with the Scott Lyle yeah. and the the kind of cartoon esque, the mm -hmm. bande dessinée yeah. element, mm -hmm. and that little, you know, one of the works that I like the best and maybe this just because I'm a bit old-fashioned, was that little suitcase on the ground. Yes. And that was it. So you had, who had that suitcase? It was um, about uh, Graham? What's his I, name? I, Gareth Moore? Is yeah, Gareth, Gareth Moore's Moore. box? It was Gareth that's Moore's with, box. The, with the Scott Lyle, that was the sort of thing where, yeah, because it was at the top floor with the skylights and so on. It was yeah. the sort of thing where, to me, that is a piece which you need to sort of spend six hours. The Scott Lyle. Yeah, because given that they're all just the separate hues, it's watching the colors change as the light changes through the room. That, to me, is the whole purpose of the piece. Okay. As opposed to just seeing them as blobs on the wall and as, okay, they're the straight color. Mm -hmm. uh, and however, the idea of spending six hours there sitting there and watching them. Was that, yeah. was that the objective of them? Uh, that would be my guess on it. Okay. In terms of any time you put cues on a wall, yeah. and there are these slow grade, gray, uh, which one, the variations and so on, I'm saying, sure. okay, well, what's the point is to see what the experience is at various times of day and recognize that there is a changing in color and so on, and that this hue is not, it's going to be the same at 2 o'clock as it is going to be at 4 o'clock. It's not okay. going to be the same on a sunny day as it is going to be on a rainy day. That's what my was my assumption on it. Nobody, told me about that, but then the idea that I was going to sit there for six hours was not going to happen. I mean, it, it makes sense, that interpretation, based on the skylight that was right yeah. across from it, so I could yeah. see how the potential would be there. I would think that um, the way that that work, that work, I thought, was lost, again, in that space, yes. I think that the hues were too small for the vastness of that space. So even if, for example, if you had have had three really big rectangles, mm -hmm. I think it would have been uh, captured your attention more um, because there was a very uh, denuded and um, openness about that space. Mm -hmm. There was nothing in there. They had the hues, yes. they had the beautiful skylight, um, and they had the, the bande dessinée pieces yes. at each yeah, end, yeah, right? That were more colorful, yeah, the jeune barbier, barbier mm -hmm. stuff. Which I thought, like, I mean, aesthetically, it was a nice open space. And I think that you could, that's where the remembering happened to mm -hmm. me, which maybe is important. Maybe leaving that space open allowed you to imbue it with your own memories or your mm -hmm. own remembering of things. So maybe that space worked more than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, it's also that you came at it last. Yes. I came at it almost first. Exactly. And so I was already at it. Uh, ready to have a little bit of contemplative time mm -hmm. after I'd gone through the whole building. And there was a quietness about that space that allowed me to mm -hmm. do that. So I think that that, on a curatorial level, worked. Mm -hmm. um, and I loved, I did like, um, love is maybe a strong word, but I liked that, um, uh, who did you say? Uh, Moore? Gareth Moore. Gareth Moore's little mm -hmm. um, suitcase, mm -hmm. which pe people were invited to open in 2047 or whatever, okay. which was, um, I thought it was interesting because I thought, I just okay. thought it was really out of, like, his, I don't know, his interpretation mm -hmm. of what people would find in 2047, I thought was not necessarily reflective of what our idea of 2011 is. I mean, it looks like a suitcase that could have come out in 1910. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, 
I don't know whether there was a kind of nostalgic element to that, which, which was purposely done, or whether that's just where he's coming from personally. Um, but I did think that there was something very, um, there was something tactile about that. Like I think a lot of the uh, the colors and the and the stuff that he had in there was very organic. Like there was these old beat up yeah. books and objects and things like that. Well, to me, it's a sort of thing again, just accumulating stuff and calling it art. I seen numerous examples of it and to me when done when done well it becomes interesting but even then it really to me does not necessarily make it art so I, I can I'm a pack rat, so I can accumulate right. the best of them well see I didn't see I saw it not as art but I saw it as opening it up and it was in fact the artist that you mm -hmm. would find in, inside it wasn't I mean if the artist and the artwork can be conflate like mm -hmm. can, can be one yeah. um, because I saw it as the the person who, you know, like it was, um, as an artist, you know, this is what I've put together, and it was more a reflection of, of him, I think, um, than of any kind of what I would define as artwork, I guess. I'm, I'm assuming the piano is going to be art. No. Also, I was unclear to me whether, because there was it looked like it was stacks of posters, and like it. It was unclear to me whether this was a piece that he'd done elsewhere and that he'd postered this up because on the posters he invited people to contact him if they were interested in opening this up or participating in that in 2047. And I don't know whether that was kind of a fictional uh, invitation or whether there was a real element to it or whether this piece had been presented elsewhere. Okay, I, um, I think I that there. That part. So there was, well, there was just beside the suitcase, yeah. there was these. Pieces and um, of like a, looked like stacks of posters, mm -hmm. um, and again I thought that uh, to be really effective, I think that you would that second step or wherever yeah. he's going with it would be an mm -hmm. important thing yes. to understand. If he's mm -hmm. if he's if he's going somewhere with that, you know, if he wants mm -hmm. to bring it out into the kind of public domain, that which brings me to another art piece, which is this idea of bringing in art that initially existed in the public domain and bringing it into a kind of more formalized mm -hmm. setting. I found that, uh, like Derek Sullivan's work, which was that sculpture that you could poster up things that you wanted to. So I guess that this sculpture has been, has traveled and has been presented outdoors as public art and indoors and um, I actually thought that it wasn't as strong inside. I mean, I think that having it outside, there's, I just think that there's um, something that works better in that context. Mm -hmm. What I did find interesting is that what people chose to put up on on his... On the, 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 brain, on the Brancusi yes, uh, sculpture. on the sculpture, mm -hmm. were very, it's very kind of tokenistic, like there was sort of a ritualizing component, and mm -hmm. one of the, you know, one of the women who I knew who was working there said, you know, people want to put something up, like they just mm -hmm. feel compelled, like it's kind of like, I want to leave a trace of myself. Mm -hmm. Just like some of the artists yep. have left traces of, of themselves in that space. Mm -hmm. So I did find that in this particular instance, something that could be, the translation could be lost in bringing it inside, I feel that it was kind of reappropriated for a different means. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was something interesting about that. You know, like there was, there was like little post-it notes yep. and there was, you know, there was some, some mundane things stuck up there. Um, but it was this idea of, I also want to leave a trace of me here. And I thought that it allowed for that. 